Hello to my Aquarius. Aquarius's reading is for the 15th of May through the 15th of June. This is in preparation for this full moon. We are officially in the first quarter moon phase, getting ready for the full moon on the 23rd of May. So first quarter moon in Leo, right? So Leo is all about allowing your vulnerability to be your strength and just going where you are really appreciated and not simply where you are tolerated. So take a minute to think about, you know, as this moon is waxing and waning, you know, uh, when that moon was in cancer during this past weekend, did you feel when you thought about your relationships, did you feel nurtured, protected, secure, um, the quality of your relationships, your friendships, you know, that could have been a thought that, you know, a lot of people had over the weekend. And then think about where you are now, like as you're evolving and redefining quality, not just the quantity, not how long you've known people, but just kind of like how you've evolved, where you are right at this moment. And just think about, do you feel appreciated in all of your relationships on your job? in your business, just where you are in life. Do you feel appreciated? And that vulnerability will really be your strength. Let's get into you. I've already prayed over your cards um, and I've already asked Most High God for complete and total clarity in every area of your lives. So when the moon is in Leo, you'll know you landed on the light side of the moon in Leo. And we know Leo is ruled by the sun. If you're feeling a little bit more exuberant, creative, broad-minded, colorful, and fun-loving, in contrast, you'll know if you or whoever landed on the dark side of the moon in Leo and they're feeling more self-indulgent, self-centered, conceited, overbearing, and even bullying. A moon in Leo, no matter what your sun sign, it gives you dignity and affectionate outgoing nature and an instinct for leadership. Specifically for my air signs, a Leo moon lends a dynamic, compelling quality to your people-oriented personality. So keep that in mind. Don't forget to pull your birth chart. Don't forget to find out what your moon sign is and then go straight to Google and type in how to nurture moon in whatever your moon sign is um, for man, woman, however you identify or however you identify so that you'll know when your water gets low, meaning your mood, your feelings, and you're trying to reassess, you know, when life is just coming at you, you know, life is lifing. You'll know exactly how to nurture yourself so that you just don't miss a beat. You can keep right on going. Don't forget to wake up, set your intentions every single day, and stay in a posture of gratitude, Aquarius. Let's get it. Let's go. Like I said, I've already prayed over your cards. Let's see what's in them. All right. So, right now, the only planet that is retrograde, Aquarius, is Pluto. Pluto is the planet of death rebirth it's a regenerative planet um and it's a planet that's going to be uh retrograde for like i said over 150 days i think right now it's about 151 days left in the retrograde uh for pluto pluto is the outermost planet it's the planet of death rebirth so as relationships are ending, you know, with yourself, anything that you may have obsessed over, like being an overgiver of thought or overgiver or anything to it, and you're ending that part of yourself and you're learning how to balance things out, um, just be gentle with yourselves as you move forward. It's also the planet of obsession. So there may be some energies that are obsessed with you overgiving chance after chance after chance after chance. Let's get it. All right. I've already prayed over your cards. First card out of the deck is the Two of Wands, the Ten of Wands. We also have the King of Wands. Here we have the Seven of Swords, Knight of Swords, and also the Seven of Cups. Something having to do with the fire energy. Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius. Um, here we have the Two of Wands. There's two energies in particular. Here we also have the Ten of Wands. Here we also have the King of Wands. You're inspiring a lot of people. You're inspiring a lot of people, Aquarius. You're motivating a lot of people. Here we have the Seven of Swords. We also have the Six of Swords. And we also have the Seven of Cups, right? So when we think about fire, you want to think about inspiration, enthusiasm, energy, action, goals, the mind, ambitions, dreams. So there's definitely some energies that are obsessed with pulling you back into chaos, confusion, 
pulling you back into and these energies specifically are energies that are inflexible, very stern, disorganized in their thinking. They have an inability to control the things that they're passionate about and they're out of balance, out of balance, right? And so when you think about the number two, number two symbolizes peace, right? Like the peace sign. And so these energies definitely would love to disrupt your peace. And there's one in particular that would really, really love to disrupt your peace and disrupt the impact that you're making on this, your community, the world at large. And so you have to stay locked in and laser focused. See, you can't even fit the window of opportunities that's trying to come in your way, Aquarius, on this, even on this card here. And so I definitely see that you are locked in and laser focused. So I see you traveling light moving forward, Aquarius. Some of you all are relocating um, and just stay focused, stay focused, stay focused, stay focused, learning how to protect your, uh, your fire, right? Like I said, you're inspiring a lot of people. A lot of you all are already booked and busy. And so traveling light just means that you're not worried about who in your past is obsessed with trying to burn you. They've already fallen into their own flame because they couldn't even see that you've already made it to your throne of your ideas, right? I mean, how you inspired people and how you've motivated people. So here we have the seven of swords and also the knight of swords. And like I said, you've already developed a strategy, you know, Aquarius and just kind of how you move. And um, so you're moving through a rite of passage. You moved on from the depth of disappointment, you know, a long time ago. And so remember when you think about your vulnerability being your strength as this moon is moving from Leo into Virgo, you can meticulously analyze your own lives. Like, like if you put putting together a spreadsheet and say, when you look at this and this and this and this, and because Virgo is an earth sign, um, you can look at it like, and just like going back through your journal, really, if you, if you've been journaling and we do have digital journals and digital calendars, and that's why I talk about it so much, not just our digital journals and calendars, you can create your own if you like. Um, so there's never any pressure there, but that's why I talk about journaling your, your journey so much because you want to travel light. You want to be able to say, okay, if this doesn't serve my highest purpose of operating in my purpose to become a better human being for mankind, ultimately for yourself and mankind as a humanitarian, then you need to release it, right? And so I definitely feel like once you start to recognize that people are moving funny, you're going to learn how to move right on out of their way. You want to make sure when you have a kundalini experience and you understand the power of, you know, you understand serpent power, right? You understand how, when it's a kundalini experience. So let me give somebody an example um, um, of what that would look like. Let's say, for instance, you are getting to know, uh, let's say, you're uh, you're in a workplace environment. I know a lot of you all have put comments below that you you uh, started new jobs. So congratulations to you. Like I said, I see a lot of duties and responsibilities and things like that. And let's say you're still in a probationary period, and you hear um, you hear kind of gossiping and stuff going on in the office. But you also hear that you know that same energy that's starting a whole bunch of gossip is always being passed over for promotions, right? That would be an example of this. That's just one example, right? Of just saying, yeah, you see how they move. And so a lot of people are drawn to that because they're drawn to their fire. They're drawn to that friction. Oh, let me see if I can get the latest what's going on in the office to be a part of that just to see what they're talking about. And maybe you're getting some information from a person who is telling you they're constantly being passed over for promotions but they don't see that their words are creating their reality. So you may be thinking as a humanitarian because you're no respecter of person. Let me see what that person is talking about so I can kind of sort of gain some understanding and think, oh, that's awful. Why they're passing you over for promotions and so on and so forth. You're just there to do a job. They're sitting there talking about how they can't stand this person. They know everybody's personal business, this and that and so on and so forth. So you're steering clear of that because before you become the topic of discussion, right? So that would be an example of that, Aquarius. That would be an example of that. So yeah, there's definitely some energies that watch you. They uh, they just have an obsessive, like I said before, they have an inability to control the things that they're passionate about. They are utterly obsessed, you know, uh, with you all, Aquarius. And so 
we're not going to focus so much on their obsession because I see that you all are staying locked in and laser focused. That situation will handle itself in a way that, like I said, your prayer life has increased, but so has your meditation life increased. Here we have the Ace of Wands here. Your third eye is open. So Source is showing you a lot, showing you everything, actually. Um, Ace of Wands here. Third eye is wide open. You see everything. Um, you are aware of everything that's going on. Here we also have the Six of Wands here. Like I said, prayer and meditation life has increased, right? Um, your gifts are actually becoming a lot stronger. This is a judgment card attached to Pluto. And so uh, Pluto, like I mentioned before, Pluto is the uh, planet of fulfillment, right? It's really it's just like you may, I mean, it's a planet of transformation, right? So you've already made a very, very powerful transformation. Here we have the full card. And you're already, the reason why you see the Knight of Swords here is because you're already on a, you're on a whole new quest. You're on a whole new, this is where you left the circus situation behind. So you've already moved on from all of that. And sources made sure you're financially independent. So you're independent of all of that circus, you know, type of energy anyway. And so you don't have to give it a whole lot of time. Matter of fact, somebody has gotten so good just in your spiritual gifts and really being able to turn and in, tune into because fire also connects with our dreams, daydreams, night dreams, you know, kind of where you cope, where you, when that daydream, you go off to that place where you know how to connect with, um, just that part of yourself where you're able to reach out and connect like that, that level of communication real quick, jump off and go into a different frequency. Uh, so yeah, so you, you've already moved on, you know, uh, and like I said, on your throne, let me see what else we got going on here. Yeah. So you're definitely in the light and you've moved on. So there is no going back. So we have the six, the ace, and also the two. So yeah, you've already moved on. And so there's energies, uh, that, let me see how I can put this. For somebody, there is an energy that is still in wilderness situations that are trying to alert you of things. They're like giving you play by play, giving you information for somebody. So you'll know who I'm, you'll know, whoever you are, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So there's energies that are still in will a wilderness situation where they're still connected and they have to be real careful, but they, they are giving you information, Aquarius. But again, you, you're moved on. Um, booked and busy, not burdened at all. You made a powerful transformation both in your personal and your professional life, um, Aquarius. And Judgment Card came out twice. Again, um, powerful transformation. Again, Pluto is connected to this. Pluto is the... I know in one of you all's readings, I did a, a reading where we saw three moons, right? And then the only planet that has three moons would be Pluto, right? And that lets me know as the the moon is waxing and waning, you've gone through all those stages, phase, fact, I mean, waning and waxing through those moon phases of life. Here we also have the Ace of Wands here. And, and so again, this is double booked and busy. Like I said, booked and busy. Uh, some of you all have moved on. Uh, you're not carrying the, the heaviness and the weight of two types of situations there. You've learned how to take your power back. Here's the seven of swords coming out twice. You see it here, right? You see it here. These are the same cards here, right? So it's two types of situations in particular that you've learned how to be very strategic and move on from. Like, okay, it doesn't make lot. It didn't make logical sense to you before, and so, and it could have caused a lot of nightmares for you all before Aquarius, but you've awakened from some nightmares and sources saying to you, everything is fine. Everything is fine. This is again, where you're headed to King of Pentacles, King of Pentacles. Let's see what else we got going on. All righty. All righty, Aquarius. All right. All right. All right. So yeah. So yeah, you have, um, like I said, moved on from... Moving on from some circus situations, you know, um, Aquarius and judgment is definitely coming down on some energies, definitely coming down on some energies. And, um, here we have the world card. So the world card, like I said, is fulfillment. You're not looking, you're not waiting for, you're not waiting for some kind of recognition. You're not waiting for word back because if somebody from 
the inside that's sending messages to you via telepathy. So the only way you'll know is that you know that you tapped fully into your gifts. You know, Aquarius, you're tapped fully into your gifts so that you and you have to be really comfortable with your gifts. Like I said, how you inspire people, how you motivate people. Um, and you're inspiring and motivating a whole lot of people. Yeah, you're inspiring and motivating a whole lot of people. So here we have the hangman here. So you're just hanging in there, you know, with yourselves. You're hanging in there with yourselves. Here we have the Empress card here. You've learned how to detach from energies that will try to limit your abundance in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Like I said, a lot of you all are booked and busy. You're not burdened at all. There was one energy in particular that was dead set on trying to limit your abundance in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Like I said, the energy was just very stern, inflexible, disorganized, just in their thinking. And this is you right here. You've moved on. You've moved on victoriously. Here we have the Page of Wands. So somebody is feeling a lot stronger, uh, uh, feeling a lot more motivated, feeling like a teenager again, you know, Aquarius. And uh, let's see what else we got going on here. Let's see what else we have going on. So yeah, like I said, your vulnerability is your strength. And so when you realize that you don't feel appreciated in spaces, Aquarius, the sooner you move on, the sooner... You can just recognize when you're somebody is getting so good, like I said before, you're getting so good, Aquarius, that you're recognizing. That's why I gave you an example of like for a lot of you all who are new in spaces that you getting yourself up out of stuff. When you hearing people like, you know, prejudge people like they like to stay in a bunch of gossip and, and mess and all this other stuff. You're just pulling yourself up out of that. You're like, I only want to be a part of that because if they sitting around talking like messing up, they messing up. You hearing them say. Oh, they never get promoted. They this and that. They stay focused on the wrong thing. You only want to be a part of it. You're there to do a job and that's it. But you can also peep that in your personal life as well, Aquarius, when you, you're around certain people. That's all they like to do. Some of your family members have been like that. That's so they know the whole family's business. Miserable. Know the whole family's business and always talking about this and that. So like I said before, you're just learning to say, don't invite you to stuff. Here we also have the three of wands here. So... I see you taking a leap of faith moving forward. Here's the death card. So, yes, something is over. It's over. It's over. The death card lets me know that you're on the renewal side and somebody is drinking some heavy drinks, you know, when it comes to you all, Aquarius. And so you're definitely living a finer life. Here we have the king of pentacles again came out twice. Your wishes are being fulfilled, Aquarius, in every area of your lives. Um, here we also have the Ten of Swords. You survived a lot of things that were meant to take you out of here, walking it back. We also have the Ace of Cups here. You're learning not to cast your pearl, your pearls before energies that just don't appreciate you. So you're not only a source putting you around a different group of energies. Um, there it is, Ten of Cups here. You're, like I said, your wishes are being fulfilled both in your personal and your professional life. So... A lot of stuff going on. New and exuberant love for you all. I love it, Aquarius. I love it. I love it. I love it. Your prayers and meditation are definitely being answered, Aquarius. Here we have the Nine of Pentacles. And a lot about the energy coming your way. They are um, financially independent. So they're not all about burning through your wealth of knowledge, your wealth of um, material possessions, wealth of home, wealth of, you know, your reputation or wealth of your generosity. They're not all about burning through, you know, you. So stay focused, stay focused, stay focused. Somebody really has learned how to see the mask of energies, right? Here we have the two of pentacles, right? People who, who try to mask their, their wealth, you know, in a sense, like, you know, the term keeping up with the Joneses, they don't really have anything, but they try to mask the, that kind of stuff and try to make it seem like they got what's going more than what they, that kind of stuff, right? Where you really, really have been the real deal. Let's see what else we got going on here. So let's see what else we got going on here, Aquarius. So like I said before, I feel like somebody met, the reason why it is an obsession there, because people felt like you're the real deal. Like you're a hardworking person. You put blood, sweat, and tears, speaking of fire and sweat, you know, you put your blood, speaking of sword energy, you're a hardworking person. And so what did not make logical sense 
and to just how you march to the beat of your own drum is making um, making sense to a lot of people right now, Aquarius, that you are not lazy, that you're very hardworking and that you get the job done. And it's making you very, very wealthy. Right. So when we talk about um when we talk about pentacles energy, it's not just about money. It's never been just about money because you all are not a money hungry sign. But the fact that the energy of money is so attracted to you all, pentacles energy is about wealth. It's also about material possessions, practicality, home, health, generosity. So even if you were to, let's say you've gone through bankruptcies or repossessions or loss of properties or those kind of things. The reason why you can you can thank Source is because Source was actually protecting you from energies when you were learning what your love language was, like you were trying to navigate through what your love language was. A lot of you all have to remember that you move from your heart chakra. And so when you're moving from your heart chakra and you're trying to make it make sense, that's the element of air, you're action oriented, you're intelligent, you're, you have a lot of ideas. You're trying to think logically, communication, your thoughts, your truth, you know, so make sure you have some kind of pink stone or some kind of green stone um, that's going to help you get that back in alignment. Matter of fact, when the moon is in, when the moon is in Leo, a citrine is very, very helpful, um, a, a great crystal um, during Leo days. And then it, cause it shines like that, you know, that yellow light, like Leo's, like I said, connects us with fire, the element of the, the color yellow, right? That solar plexus chakra, right? Burning candles or making a fire, you know, tossing things into a burning bowl, um, like fear, doubt, uncertainty, those kind of things. And just knowing that there are energies that are watching, they are stalking, they're watching every little thing. But the saving grace here, too, is like I say, your prayer and meditation life being a lot more clear and concise about what your prayers are. You know, Aquarius, what I'm saying, because I'm saying the judgment card here and something ending. In other words, see these two cards right here connect us with the tower card, right? So there's definitely an upheaval happening going on here. You know, all hell breaking loose. So there's a destruction of the old. And so there's some energies that are being quite disruptive right now because your prayers were answered. You know, your prayers were answered, you know, Aquarius. And um, let me see what else we got going on here so we can go ahead and get ready to close this out. Get ready to close this out. Yeah, so. Yeah. So it's nearly, it really needs you to just stay focused. Really, really needs you to stay locked in and laser focused. Stay focused, stay focused, stay focused. Stay focused. Again, we got um, Ten of Swords here. Uh, let's put it all together. So tens across the board in terms of how you inspire and how thorough you are and how you inspire people, Aquarius, your tens across the board, whatever it is that you do, you pray for people, you're, cr you're crystal clear on how you inspire, how you motivate. It doesn't really matter what your profession is, but how you inspire, how you motivate people, how you, you know, motivate them to, you know, find their purpose, you know, pray for, you know, clarity with their, in their purpose here, you know, on earth, right? And so that's why Source is saying, you know, you can go ahead and continue taking the leap of faith moving forward and not look back. That's why you got the King of Pentacles twice. That's why you have the um, Knight of Swords twice. Source is saying, stay locked in and laser focused. You got it. You got it. Yeah. Seven of Swords came out twice. So what you're seeing here is a lot of you're, you're seeing um, master numbers here in your spread of cards here. So, yeah, you've definitely awakened from some nightmares. Somebody is learning that. So you got, you got the Ten of Swords three times, right? So again, so what you're saying, continue taking a leap of faith. You're not taking any leaps of fear. 
You got the, the Seven of Swords twice. You got the Knight of Swords twice. You also have the Ten of Swords twice. So it's just saying to you, everything is fine. Um, you have the Ten of Cups twice here, right? You have the King of um, King of Pentacles twice, you know, here, you know, Aquarius. Um, you have the Nine of Pentacles twice here. You and your person are definitely building a legacy together. So Source is putting you with other energies that, like I said before, you all have the same ideas about your your the way you think, your logic is the pros outweigh the cons when it comes to money, wealth, material possessions, practicality, home, health, generosity. See, a person to a person who already has the circulation of wealth down, for them, health may be wealth for them. Health is wealth. So their primary focus may not be on money. Their primary focus may be on just a healthier lifestyle, like choosing healthier options, eating options, and like healthier choices, you know, being in spaces where the conversations are different, you know, Aquarius. And so that's what I'm seeing, you know, for you all. And just, you know, just your strategy and just choosing where you are now that you've awakened from some nightmares. Here we have Way. Here we also have the Queen of Wands, the Wisdom card, Princes of Pentacles, the God card, and then also Two of Wands, right? So there could, be, there could have been two Aries involved in a situation. You know, for somebody, a Scorpio could have been involved. Like I said, Tower moments are happening here. We also have two of wands again, right? So there's some energies that absolutely want to reach out to you, but it would be a bait and switch situation. You're dealing with some energies that are disorganized, that's stern and inflexible, right? So basically it's their way or the highway. When you've add, added structure and authority to your life. Here we also have the queen of wands here. And however people try to reach out to you, like I said, whether they're trying to reach out via telepathy because there's several players in all of this, Aquarius, as you can see with all the cards out here on the table, right? Here we have the Sun card here. And so when we see the Sun card here, um, somebody, you are feeling um, very joyful, very successful. And you don't have to wait on the success because you've already, you've already quantum leaped there, right? So you've already moved into that space, you've gained a lot of wisdom there, right? So you've already, like I said, the inner wisdom, you've tapped into the inner teacher, right? And so somebody is definitely feeling like they had an inability to control their passion. And it's very, it's been very hard for somebody who is very passionate about, um, they're just really obsessing over you. And so when you're talking about somebody who's obsessing, you don't know what they're obsessing over you, um, sexually, um, intellectually obsessions are just never healthy period, right? It's just, it's not healthy period. Here we have, um, uh, princes pentacles, right? Princes of pentacles, right? It's just, a, it's a very, very unhealthy, um, just, just very unhealthy. No matter how you look at it. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, um, obsessions are abnormal, right? It's, it's just enough. It just, it's just, like I said, it's just not healthy at all. It's persistent. It's disturbing. It's unreasonable preoccupations with an idea or a feeling. Um, it can cause anxiety is distress. It can cause distress, discomfort. Um, it's, it's a contaminant. It's just, like I said before, it's just not healthy. You know, it's just, it's just, it's unhealthy. It's a fixation, right? So somebody is fixated on you. And so, um, some energies are fixated on you. So again, here we have the, uh, princes of pentacles here for whatever reason, but it doesn't really matter. Like I said, sources say you've developed the strategy to stay focused in other words, you have, you're the I know sign. You have a knowing that source is already taking care of the situation. So you're not worried about it, right? That's where you put your faith, right? So you don't have to worry about it. And like I said, judgment is, you know, uh, judgment card. We're talking about total transformation, both, both in your, um, your personal and your professional life. And so there's some energies that are being forced to 
change. They're being forced to change. Um, and so what, whatever it is being forced to change, they don't have anything to do with you. You've already moved on. So like I said, there's definitely some energies that, um, like I keep trying to tell people, karmic cycles will be broken this year. A lot of people don't want to see that. There's a lot of people that feel like they're telling the truth about other people, but source is saying it's really the truth about yourself. We don't have control. We don't have dominion over other human beings. And that's where people are getting real lost. We are not other people's gods. It's the truth of self. So that's why Source is saying from the full card to the to the uh, world card, which are both of your ruling planets, the Uranus and also Saturn, your your assignment is complete. Your assignment is complete in people's life, in these people's lives. There is no going back. When you see the judgment card, like I said, Pluto, like I mentioned in previous reading, the only planet that has three moons is uh, is uh, Pluto, right? So completion. Put yourselves first. Somebody's in it. Like I said, they're in a crisis. Some energies are in a crisis. Here we have always bet on you. You're healing from the pain that some energies cause. It's time to expand your brand. The star card also came out back straight. Walk away. Your laughter is medicine. That's what I've been saying to you all. A lot of you all, whatever it is you're doing, you actually ignite a flame in people, right? And so it's always nice being around warm spirited people, people who inspire and motivate people, people who cause people to be enthusiastic and their energy is good energy to be around. You inspire people to take action, to be goal oriented, to, you know, uh, toss things into a burning bowl and have a clear mind to be ambitious and then also dream bigger, right? Dream bigger. So you have the gift of premonition. That's forewarning. That's why I mentioned, I gave you the example of like being in a new workspace. That's just one example, right? So you can, you can fill it in with whatever is going on in your life, but being in a new workspace and you're here, you're overhearing, you know, their, your new colleague while you're in, uh, while you're in, um, you know, just the beginning stages of, you know, the workspace. And you're overhearing people talking about how they're always passed over for, for promotion and they the office gossip and they talk about this and that. And you're just like, oh, wow, you may be, you may, you know, you may be tempted. That's what this seven of cups here, temptation. You may be tempted to be like, hmm, what are they talking about? What are y'all, what? But then pull yourself up out of it. Keep your vibrations high. Somebody's learning how to move in silence and in peace. But like I said, before I even pull these cards out, your gifts have increased. Wealth is within your reach. Wealth of whatever wealth means to you, but don't look back. There is no looking back. There is no going back because they haven't been completely honest about some things. So listen to your inner voice. Take a leap of faith. You heard me say that before. Your well of joy is within. So again, please put your, belt, your birth chart, Aquarius. Um, there's a lot going on here in your reading. Some of you all are in various stages of your gifts, so I won't hold you for too long with, you know, the different various stages of gifts. For those of you all are new to my channel, welcome. If you're coming back, welcome back. Welcome back. So it's like I said before, some of you all know how to go between dimensions, go to the channel, come back up to a higher frequency. Um, you know how to dip in and dip out. I'll just, I'll just put it that way. Um, and so source is alerting you to a lot of things that's going on, you know, right now. And, um, shamanic wisdom, you have shamanic wisdom, you know, Aquarius, lots of wisdom you have, lots and lots of wisdom you have, Aquarius, um, go, go back and watch some of the other uh, previous videos. Yeah. You um you know how to connect to the natural world, you know, for help and inspiration. You know how to tune in to the frequency of trees. And you know about the four directions. Um An affirmation that somebody could say is the natural world is part of me and I am listening to its voice right now. That's an affirmation somebody could say, you know, to yourself. You know, the elements are constantly communicating with us. Our ancestors knew this. 
and their lives were intricately tied to the land, the weather, and the sea. Um, so every indigenous culture still carries this wisdom and honors the earth daily. So when we talk about like you and um, uh, Capricorn are both ruled by Saturn, right? And so you're also ruled by Uranus. These two are outer planets, Aquarius. So it may not have been immediately uh, clear to you all on your journey of learning what your purpose is. And that's why some people may have felt like, okay, they, they may think they know you well enough to try to warm up to you, to try to reach back out to you. But again, I can't reemphasize this. If it didn't make it to this cycle in your life right now, release it, release it in love. Keep it on your, th keep it on the throne. Keep it on the throne, keep it on the throne, keep it on the throne. You're not harshly judging anybody at all. Uh, but in your minor arcana, the tempter is just roaming. The tempter is roaming to see if there is any emotional imbalance, any feelings about things, right? See if it can get into your water, your emotions, your intuition, your quality of relationships, your friendships, your spirituality, which is where I'm telling you all Aquarius to find out what your moon sign is and flush it out before it has a chance to slither its way into it. That's why I gave you the example of if you're in something new and like a new job and you're in probationary period, you know, in your new job, that may be tempting to you to go listen to what it's saying. But remember, that's also the vibration of sound through your ear gate. Ear gate and eye gate flush all of that out. That's why I talk about listening to water sounds, just the vibration of sound, listening to music, all of those things, it, the music away from that kind of stuff, like at a certain frequency, right? So find out what your moon sign is. Like I said before, um, the moon is in the moon is in Leo. And let's say, for example, let's say your moon is in Leo. The previous videos I talked about if your moon is in um um cancer so go back and look for you know if your moon is in um uh, cancer but if your moon is in leo for for example um how to nurture that and you can google this like how, you can google it yourself but if your moon is in leo for example um you can do things like you know give back to others you can channel creative energy um, like giving back to others would do something like for, you know, do something for someone else, like as such as writing a card, planning an event or making dinner. You can spend time in the sun since Leo is ruled by the sun um, and it's a fire sign, like enjoy the sun, creative self-expression. You can practice emotional self-care, be your own biggest fan and do creative things to please yourself. You can take pride in your appearance. You can feel confident about who you are. And you can, you know, keep your body nourished with moisturizer. You can take time for spontaneity and play, channel your emotions, your energy into creative pursuits, such as drawing or dancing. You can get TLC from close friends and family. Um, Leo moons need a lot of TLC from close friends and family. So Google it, right? Google it. Do things that nurture your spirit so that, like I said here, you're going through a lot of things and, you know, there are some obsessive spirits that may not even know why they're obsessing over you right now in Aquarius. And so this is where you really want to be in tune with that part of yourselves so that you're not just hopping in the spaceship and zooming on off to another land and then come back like, la, da, 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 what in the world happened, right? This is where you want to really, really boots on the ground, pay attention because there's a lot of there's a lot you can get from the four corners of the world, <laughs> you know, Aquarius. And that's what you're doing. You're, you're gaining insight from the four elements. And so water for you, because you're on your throne here, you're on your throne, you know, getting some fresh air and getting out near water so that your, your thoughts are not going towards, like I said, go take a drive, go take a walk. Um, yeah, so go take a drive, go take a walk so that you make sure you're on your throne of your air and your water, right? So that when you're taking action and you are 
in a healthy emotional state like you you are an air sign but you're also a water bearer that you have some fresh air and that you are um your like i gave the example of being in a new situation in a new space right that your emotions are clear and your cup is full of water from that well of joy that you drew from from the inside out you know so even if you are let's say for those of you because water also connects with sex right sexuality even if you're practicing abstinence i feel like somebody could be maybe practicing abstinence i feel like somebody could be having sacred sex you know whatever it is you're doing um or you know open to whatever make sure you are um doing the research i'll just put it that way make sure you're doing the research to protect yourselves we talked a little bit one time before about just auric layers and um, people just being close to you um just being in your auric layer and you're um, absorbing their uh repressed or even unprocessed emotions right like all of that is important aquarius you know them just being only a few inches off of your your physical body even talking to certain people over the phone that's why some people are remember those lines that they used to have back in the day for those of you all who are a little older when they used to have those phone sex lines back in the day and people would like look up and then their phone bill be like crazy high ridiculously high they couldn't figure out for the life of them um those kind of things so even those kind of conversations with people on the phone you can't figure out for the life of you why people are obsessed with with that you know because all of that speaks to your sacral chakra water right so make sure you are protecting your energy aquarius so that it won't be so like you're so you're not oblivious to why people are just completely just or not even just that because joy is down in that uh sacral chakra too maybe you have some people cracking up laughing because maybe you just remember your laughter has been medicine to a lot of people maybe you was the highlight in some people's day. Maybe you had people laughing so hard they was crying, laughing, tears shooting out their eyes like they be doing in the cartoons, right? Fists banging on them, just they just crying, laughing, cracking up. And maybe that's what some people miss too, but to an unhealthy, abnormal obsession, Aquarius. Pay attention, right? So pay attention. So um you want to make sure that you have healthy relationships. Water also connects us with Water also connects us with uh, quality of relationships and friendships and also spirituality too. So that's why you really want to tap in, right? Tap in, tap into source within you, tap in. All right, let's close it out. Let's close it out. Let's close it out with your shamanic wisdom, right? So let's close it out, Aquarius. Let's close it out. Yeah, signs all around you, right? So instincts are the message from the inner divine. Instincts are the message from the inner divine. Yeah, and while you all are praying, pray for everybody that made it to the other side with you. Everybody that made it to the other side with you. The quality of those relationships, pray for them. Because you don't know what kind of obsessive energies they have in their lives. You know what I'm saying? You don't know who's obsessing over them. Because they're also connected to you. You don't know you're, you're um, keeping them covered and protected too. You know, just with your prayer, you're inspiring and motivating them as well. So, all right, all right, all right, all right. Ribbons, for it lives in the silk of my binding, the knots in my truth, the eye of becoming, the witness swallowed in stillness. Hmm, yeah. Some people are, t are tied up in some stuff right now. They don't have anything to do with you. You've already did cord cutting ceremonies. You've already cut ties with energies completely. That's why I said it's fulfilled. You went from the full card to the uh, fulfillment card, right? And judgment is coming down on some energies right now. It has nothing to do with you. You've already moved on with your life. So some energies are tied up in some stuff. Um, and they're trying to get untangled in some stuff. And so let me see what else we have going on here this is our oh, number and then that last the um moonology do 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 elevator music 23 i'm adventurous you have a zest for life and you're 
eager to experience anything and everything possible. You love change and excitement and both to uh, feel truly alive. For you, life is an adventure to be lived to the fullest. That's right. So you're definitely at a, um, you're at a pivotal point in your lives, you know, Aquarius, which is nice. You're definitely at a pivotal point in your lives as you're continuing to move forward. And uh, that's good. That's always a good thing. 23, right? 23. 23, 23, 23. Okay, this card want to just miraculously just pop up, <laughs> right? So a new start is coming. That's right. A new start is coming, right? New start, right? So it says new moon, new start, new you, right? So we're in a we're in a new moon phase. So it is a new you. There is no going back. There is no going back. There's no going backwards. So whoever made it to this new side with you, good. Good for you. Good for them. Good for everybody. Letting go, I release what I cannot control. I let go of doubt. I will not allow fear to stop me. I say goodbye to all that blocks my growth. I am weightless, free from burdens. I am shifting my perspective. I am free from regret. Failure is a helpful feedback. That's right. So you're um, shifting your perspective. Yep, shifting your perspective. Yep, shifting your perspective. So um, definitely moving on. And I feel like there's some um, energies that maybe you felt like you could save. some. I think that when I say, I, I think from somebody may have felt like they could save some energies from predatory energy, but that's what prayer is for and really, really just trusting source. That's what it really boils down to. You never want to have a God complex where you feel like it's your duty and responsibility to save anybody for real. Like, cause we don't have... No person or no human being on this planet, you can lead people to it. Like even if your job is a surgeon or a, you know, uh, you're part of a you know medical team, whatever. We have the ability to heal and to help people, but there's also free will too. You know, Aquarius, in that once a once a let's say a surgeon operates on somebody or a doctor says, hey. You know, you may want to live a healthier lifestyle. You know, we were able to help you to, you know, you know, help you this time, but you're going to have to do the work. You know, if that person goes back and does some. So I definitely feel like, um, I definitely feel like, uh, you're, you are, are tapped in. I feel like somebody is just letting go, you know, just like completely just kind of sort of, you know, just letting go of that. Um, uh, you can't make people not want to go back into temptations, whatever temptations they're involved in, right? I feel like some of your family members, this is, that's a, that's another thing too. I feel like some of your family members, you just like, yeah, you know, you don't want to keep going around such and such, such and such. And they just keep going, you know, to certain stuff, you know, as far as family situations are concerned. And this, you know, like I said, there's nothing you can do to, so that is what I have for you all, Aquarius. Thank you so much for um, thank you so much for joining me. For those of you all who like questions, for those of you all who like questions, and again, just going where you all are, appreciate. First question is: Do you connect to your core, comma your center daily? Second question is: How do you express your creative side? Third question: Is your current wardrobe really expressing who you are? Fourth question is, do you protect your energy and time by politely saying no to requests and invitations that are not aligned to your being? And then last but not least is, could you create more time and space for self-exploration and self, um, self-exploration and self-expression along the lines of somebody, um, like being in, cause this is coming through really strong too, along the lines of somebody being in a work situation, so I'm seeing booked and busy. Being in a work situation where you kind of feel like you maybe overheard some gossiping about, you know, whoever the main energy that's saying they never gets promoted, they never blah, 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 whatever. They basically like basically are instead of them looking for a new job, they're just sitting there creating all kinds of problems, trying to bring people into their own personal hell. And I feel like somebody almost is tempted to say to other people, like, you may not want to hang out with that person because 
they really could leave the job and you know they could be ruining your chances, just guilty by association and this kind of thing. Sources saying, pray for them. Just pray for them. You know, pray for them. Just say a prayer for them. I'm not sure who that was for, but just pray for them. Pray for them. That's what I have for you all. I will see you all in the next reading. Bye.